Hello there, my fellow mythologians and monster hunters, and welcome back to another lore episode from our Mythical Creature series. Today's topic is something that you are undoubtedly familiar with, but probably for all the wrong reasons. Nowadays, when you hear the word troll, many of you probably think about the so-called internet trolls and the practice of trolling. And that is a big shame, because the actual OG troll is quite a unique and interesting creature. So today we will definitely not talk about internet trolls, because you should always ignore those, and talk about the mythical creature instead. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? So, what is a troll? Trolls are humanoid creatures who dwell deep in the wilderness of Scandinavia. Their appearance can range from monstrous to bizarre and even cute, but they are predominantly unfriendly, no matter how charming they may look. Unless you are quick-witted, an encounter with a troll will never end well for you. Throughout the ages, the different renditions of the troll have fallen into two main categories. The first one is that of the forest or mountain troll, a large, brutish and dumb creature resembling a disproportionately large human. Often the creatures have exaggerated facial features, such as a jutting lower jaw or a protruding brow, quite similar to the stereotypical image of a Neanderthal. The other kind of troll is said to live underground, in a deep cave or cavern. They are much smaller, even smaller than a human sometimes, and also have disproportionately smaller features, such as short and stubby arms and legs. Trolls of this kind are often uglier and depicted as gross-looking, the favorite adjective used to describe them being slimy. The meaning of the actual word troll is not certain. It might have had the original meaning of supernatural or magical, with an overlay of malignant or perilous. Another suggestion is that it means someone who behaves violently. In old Swedish law, the trolleri was a particular kind of magic intended to do harm. It should also be noted that North Germanic terms like trolldom or trolla, trille, are not related to the actual creature itself. Moreover, in Norse mythology, troll can actually signify a large variety of creatures, including, and not restricted to, the Norse giants known as Jotnar. The ambiguous original sense of the word troll appears to have lived on for some time after the Old Norse literature was documented. This can be seen in terms such as Sjotrolet, the sea troll, as a synonym for the so-called Havsmanen, a protective spirit of the sea, and a male counterpart to the female Sjora. I do apologize if I butchered any of these words. Some scientists have also theorized, based on fossil evidence, that Neanderthals and Cro-Magnons occupy the same area of Europe at the same time. One theory claims that the trolls could be associated with the Neanderthals being encountered by the Cro-Magnons during their migration into Northern Europe. There is a big problem with this theory, though, and that is that neither Neanderthals nor Cro-Magnons existed in this part of Europe during the Ice Age. Most of Scandinavia was covered by a large glacier in this period, and it was not occupied until much later. Another scientific explanation for the troll myth is that the trolls represent the remains of the forefather cult, which was ubiquitous in Scandinavia before the introduction of Christianity. In this cult, the forefathers were worshipped in sacred groves, by altars, or by grave mounds. One of the customs associated with the practice was to sit on top of a grave mound at night, possibly in order to contact the dead. With the introduction of Christianity, however, the religious elite sought to demonize the pagan cult, and denounced all the forefathers as evil. It is in these laws that the word troll appears for the first time, denoting something heathen and generally unfavorable. This does fit with the trolls in Norse sagas who are often the restless dead, to be wrestled with or otherwise laid to rest. It is possible that both these theories have some merit. Since there have been assertions that the legends of dragons were based on ancient cultures discovering the bones of dinosaurs, 
then it can also be possible that early man had some knowledge of Neanderthals and brought them into their own legends. As mentioned earlier, and throughout the Norse culture, we can discern the forming of two main traditions regarding the use of troll. In the first tradition, the troll is a large, brutish, and a direct descendant of the Norse Jotnar, or giants. They are always described as ugly, or having beastly features like tusks or cyclopean eyes. This is the tradition which came to dominate fairy tale and legend, but it is also the prominent concept of the troll in Norway. The trolls, especially the Jotnar descendants, are very primitive creatures. They isolate themselves from human civilization, preferring to live in a cave or a murky forest beyond the reach of man. Sometimes a small community of trolls can spring up in an area, but the creatures have little to no kind of government even when they do live together. At best, the biggest and strongest of them might be crowned as a king, who has the right of bossing the others around. Above all other institutions though, they dislike religion. Legend says that it was the thunderbolts of Thor and then the ringing of the church bells which drove them into exile. And they are quick to attack traveling Christians, kidnap unbaptized children, or even destroy churches when they can. The second tradition is a bit less violent and most prominent in southern Scandinavia. These trolls are usually small, mysterious creatures, living in dark dwellings and are often mischievous. These ones can keep themselves invisible, and they can travel on the wind, or sneak into a human home. Whereas the large, ogre-like trolls often appear as a solitary being, these smaller trolls are thought to be social creatures living together, much like humans except out in the forest. These ones keep animals, they cook and they bake, are excellent at crafting, and hold great feasts. Like many species in Scandinavian folklore, these trolls are also said to reside in underground complexes, accessible from underneath large boulders in the forest or in the mountains. In their living quarters, they hoard gold and treasure. Opinions can vary wildly as to whether or not the trolls are thoroughly bad, but often they do treat people just as they are treated themselves. They can cause a lot of damage if they are vindictive or playful. Regardless of other things though, they are always heathen creatures. These smaller trolls are also great thieves, and like to steal from the food that the farmers have stored. They can enter the homes invisibly during a feast, and eat from the plate so that there is not enough food. Or they can spoil the making of beer or bread, so that it ends up not being plentiful enough. The small trolls also have a lot more tricks up their sleeve than their bigger cousins. The female Huldras, for example, have a beautiful voice, which can mimic the wind or falling water. They can lure a man into the forest with their sweet song. Others have more magical abilities, including making humans go asleep, lose track of time, see visions of treasure, and more. A famous paragraph from the Danish ballad of Eline of Vilenskov does a good description of the trolls from Scandinavian mythology, and I quote, there were seven and a hundred trolls. They were both ugly and grim. A visit they would the farmer make, both eat and drink with him. Out then spake the tiniest troll, no bigger than an emmet was he. Hither is come a Christian man, and manage him will I surely. Like other Scandinavian folk creatures, they also fear steel. According to the stories, they were hunted by Thor, who threw Mjolnir, his hammer, causing lightning bolts to kill them. Though Mjolnir was supposed to always come back to Thor after being thrown, the hammers could later be found in the earth, which were actually Stone Age axes, and were used as protective talismans. Legends from the Middle Ages feature trolls of horrifying and even satanic proportion. Church bells, crucifixes, and even the name of Christ spoken aloud scares them. These tales then drew a connection between demons, fearsome creatures who had fallen from heaven and lived in subterranean hell, and the trolls who also dwelled in the dark underground. In Spencer's The Fairy Queen, King Arthur, the symbol of a Christian knight, defeats a giant troll representing evil. Trolls did become exceedingly popular in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, 
when Neo-Romanticism in Europe began celebrating regional folklore and legend. These tales and illustrations by artists like John Bauer and Theodore Kittelson came to form the ideas most people have on trolls today. Female trolls may conspire to force the prince to marry their daughters, as in the stories East of the Sun and West of the Moon, or they also practice witchcraft, as in The Witch in the Stone Boat, where a troll usurps a queen's place, or in the story The Twelve Wild Ducks, where she turns twelve princes into wild ducks. Trolls have become a staple in fantasy literature, most notably by British author J.R.R. Tolkien, who used trolls in both The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings trilogy. In more modern times, they can still be often found in entertainment mediums, like fantasy literature and video games. Unfortunately, the most prevalent form in which they are used here is their large, brutish and violent archetype. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you on the mythological trolls and their varieties for today. Arguably, at least the smaller variety of troll are probably still more intelligent than the average internet troll today. Are you a fan of these creatures and the stories behind them? What do you like or dislike most about them? Also, take a shot whenever you hear the word troll in this video. Do you know of any other significant aspects or stories involving them? Share them in the comments below as usual. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. And do try to support the series by liking, sharing and maybe commenting. Thank you very much for watching and I wish you all an awesome day. This is GDN signing out.